Now that we have these molecular orbital diagrams and electron configurations for these homonuclear diatomic molecules, we can use these to define a qualitative metric called the bond order, which is going to tell us basically about our intuition regarding covalent bonds and how many covalent bonds there are between the two atoms in this uh, given homonuclear diatomic. So we got uh, for example, our C2 molecule, we've got carbon has a nuclear charge of 6, so 12 total electrons. So we would populate up our MO diagram up like so. That's 8, and we have 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, helium 2, we got 4 total electrons. We would populate the diagram like so. Uh, fluorine 2 has 18, so we're going all the way up to... The second highest orbital here, 15, 16, 17, 18 total electrons. And then we can also look at um, ions as well where we add or remove an electron. So O2, um, oxygen has a nuclear charge of 8, so two of them have 16 electrons. A uh, plus charge means we removed one electron, so we have 15 total electrons in O2 plus uh, to fill up these orbitals. So let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so now given these electron configurations, how many bonds are there between each of these uh, atoms here in, the, in these molecules? So in order to do this, we're going to look at a metric that is called bond order. And the bond order is going to be defined as one half of the number of electrons in bonding MOs, bonding molecular orbitals. So we have our sigma g, sigma g, sigma g, pi u. Those are all bonding orbitals. Those were more stable than the constituent atomic orbitals which form them. And then this minus the number of electrons in antibonding MOs. So close both of those brackets there. And the antibonding MOs are those which are higher in energy than the constituent atomic orbitals which uh, compose them. So sigma star u, sigma star u, um, pi star g, sigma star u, all these antibonding orbitals indicated by the star which are higher in energy than those constituent atomic orbitals. Those are antibonding molecular orbitals. So the bond order is just half the difference between the number of bonding electrons and the number of antibonding electrons. And this makes sense because a single covalent bond is two electrons. So if we have two electrons in a bonding orbital, then that is one bond. So that's where this factor of one half is coming from. Okay, so let's take each of these and calculate the bonding order for all of them. All right, so we have our C2. We have two, four, six, eight electrons in bonding MOs, the sigma G's and pi U's. So that's going to be one half of eight. And then in antibonding MOs, we have two in this sigma star U, two in this sigma star U, so we have four total. Eight minus four is four, divided by two is two. So there's the equivalent of a double bond between C2 here. And in each case, this is a this is a pi bond because there's a pi, pi bonding molecular orbital which is not canceled out by a corresponding antibonding orbital. For each of the sigma bonding orbitals, there's a sigma antibonding orbital which is filled. So this, this sigma bond gets canceled by this sigma antibond, this sigma bond gets canceled by this sigma antibond, and these two pi bonds, there is no corresponding pi antibond. So the net effect is we have two uh, pi bonds left over that form the bonds in C2, the uh, carbon diatomic molecule. All right, what about helium? Well, for helium, we have one half, two electrons in a sigma bonding orbital, sigma g, minus, two, uh, get that correct, two minus, there are two electrons in the sigma star u antibonding orbital. So two minus two is zero. So we get uh, zero. And 
You notice that helium is a noble gas, and noble gases generally prefer not to bond, and that's because the way that their electrons are arranged and the number of them that there are, it just so happens that if you bring two noble gases together, you always get an equal number of bonding and antibonding uh, electrons that come together. So in noble gases, you get no net bond, so these two helium atoms are not bonded to each other, and thus they generally prefer to be apart and as uh, separate atoms, which is why noble gases have that behavior that they do. All right, what about F2, the fluorine molecule? So we've got two, four, six, eight, ten electrons in bonding orbitals between all the sigmas and all the pi's. Antibonding, we've got two, four, six, eight. So that's 10 minus eight is two divided by two is one. So we have one net bond in F2. And what type of bond is it? Well, this sigma bond is canceled by an antibond. This sigma bond is canceled by an antibond. This sigma bond has no corresponding sigma antibond. There are only two bonding electrons there. These four electrons and these two uh, pi bonding molecular orbitals are canceled out by uh, corresponding electrons in the antibonding MOs. So the net is that we have two electrons and they're in a sigma type orbital. So we have one sigma bond in F2. And that makes sense based off of our uh, standard intuition about um, valence bond theory. Valence bond theory predicts that correctly, that you get one sigma bond in F2. But as we mentioned in the previous video, when you're talking about the O2 molecule, um, it, doesn't, it isn't able to predict the fact that you have two unpaired electrons in the O2 molecule. Okay, so then we can also look at ions where we either add or remove an electron. For O2+, plus, we remove one electron for, from the oxygen molecule, giving us a positive charge. So the result here is Let's see, we have our bonding. We have two, four, six, eight, ten electrons in bonding orbitals. And then what about antibonding? We have two, four, and then five. So we have five electrons in antibonding orbitals. Ten minus five is five. Divided by two is 2.5 bonds in O2+. Plus. And that's something that you can get based off of having an odd number of electrons. If you have an odd number of electrons, you can get an odd bond order. So there are effectively two and a half bonds in O2+. So what type of bonds are they? Well, we've got these sigma bonding electrons canceled out by those sigma antibonding electrons. These sigma bonding electrons canceled out by those sigma antibonding electrons. These, orbi these electrons in this sigma G bonding orbital are not canceled out by anything. This, the corresponding antibonding orbital is empty. So we have one sigma bond in O2+. Plus. And in this pi U orbital, this bond, these two pi bonding orbitals, we have two electrons in each of them. So that's a net of that's it, two uh, pi bonds there. And then there's one electron in this pi antibonding orbital, this pi star g. So for the pi system, we have 4 minus 1, which is 3, divided by 2. So we actually have 1.5 pi bonds in O2+. Plus. And you can do the same type of analysis for everything from H2 to neon 2 using these orbitals. You can do it for their cation like this, for their anion, where you add in an extra electron. And you'll get the bond order for each of them and um, using this type of analysis, how many of them are sigma bonds and how many of them are pi bonds.